What's up guys, it's Andrew at Elite Gaming HQ, and yesterday we put out a video talking about the new Ryzen 5000 chips and also the Radeon 6000 video cards coming out. And I talked a little bit about it, but today let's review the benchmarks, let's see what it actually means and how it'll affect you guys. I'm going to talk about real world applications and maybe it'll give you a better insight of maybe if you should be excited or if this is just going to be something, you know, the next year upgrade. What we do know is it's a new architecture. So Zen 2 wasn't around for long. Now we're moving to Zen 3, which is the 5,000 chips. Now that may be confusing for some people because 4,000 kind of got passed over, but 4,000 is more for laptops. And it was debated for a while, are they going to be called the 4,000 or 5,000 chips? But the leak yesterday proved that they are going to be the 5,000 chips. So at this article from WCCF Tech, they say they put the benchmarks up and they say AMD's upcoming eight core will absolutely demolish Intel's fastest 10 CPU core. Now, here's the thing. The benchmarks we have are ashes of the singularity. And what they're talking about is because it's easy to look at the frame rates. Maybe they're not optimized the best, but what they're talking about is uh, CPU frame rate. And you see here you have 133. Let's look at it. 133 versus... 114 which is intel's uh 10 <laughs> 10900k man intel really made all these numbers crazy but the thing to note is that intel never was that great at ashes of the singularity this has been an amd benchmark for a while so take that with the grain of salt although what they are suggesting is that the 8 core 16 thread processor is outperforming the 10 core 20 thread processor and then here you have the confirmation. This is a slide I showed yesterday where they're talking about, hey, they are the 5,000 chips and they show that it is in fact an eight core processor. So we're gonna have probably the standard, what we had before, the eight, the 12, the six core, just like the Ryzen 5s, the Ryzen 7s and the Ryzen 9s. Although we haven't seen much on a Ryzen 9. But something to really note for the consumer that we could look at here is when you look at the the Ryzen chip here. Uh, this is the current Ryzen 3800. And this chip, what's interesting about it is its price tag. So if they stay along the same price tag, which is $399, and then you have the 10900K, which, you know, it's a very impressive chip, but it's also sitting at about $100 more. So what you're saying is, if they could possibly stay at the same price tag, you're going to have a processor that's a hundred dollars cheaper that actually outperforms the Intel chip, which is 20 threads at only eight cores. So think about that. What does that mean for the Ryzen 12 core chips? The Ryzen 12 core chips must really crush this number in ashes of the singularity. So that's the other thing to note about it. It is ashes. I just want to push that on you guys so that you don't say, oh, you know, go around saying they're going to destroy them. And then when they finally go head to head, they're kind of similar because Ashes was basically built around AMD. I mean, AMD has used it for a benchmark since day one. All right, then AMD goes on to release this slide here, which this is basically saying they're above the industry standard, which of course, I mean, it's a new chip. It would be kind of sad if they were the same, which happens a lot of times with refreshes. I mean, it's been happening for years with Intel. And they say they, um, they focus on three major features, which is IPC gains, uh, faster clocks and higher efficiency which keep in mind these are 105 watt chips and then when you move over to the 5900x which would be their 12 core model this is a 150 watt chip so that's that's a lot of power draw but let's go back to the 5800 all right it says some rumors have been pointed to a 17 percent increase in ipc and a 50 percent increase in zen 3's floating point operations along with major cache redesigns what does that mean to you though? So if you're a gamer and you're playing in 4K and you have what I just upgraded to a 3900X, but let's just say you have a 3800. So you have eight cores, 16 threads, the previous generation to what we're looking at now, and you're running 4K. Would you see a difference if you do this expensive upgrade? Chances are you will not because unless you're using your computer for streaming, making videos, then I understand. But for just gaming, 
this is probably not going to have a big effect on you because when you get into 4K, you don't really utilize your CPU as much as you do your video card. So more importantly, do you need a very expensive high-end video card? And as we saw with the launch into video cards, uh, the 3080 and uh, the 3080 Ti are very good 4K cards. So if Radeon's RX 6000 series is even close to that, then we're talking everybody's going to be gaming at 4K 60 or 1440p 144. And at that point, you utilize less CPU. So the 2 to 300 megahertz core clock boost is not going to be huge unless you're a content creator. But although one good thing is AMD did say they confirmed that the 5000 chips are still going to be using the 400 and 500 series chipsets, uh, the 300 we were able to get a 3000 series processor on a 300 chipset by updating the BIOS. It was a gigabyte gaming. I do have a video for that, but no longer will you be able to do that. Which, I mean, we saw the writing on the wall with that when they released the XT chips because they no longer allow you to use the 3000, the 300 chipset, sorry. And as of right now, they suggest the Zen 2 processors, which is the 3000 series, is just way too big compared to whatever Intel has on the shelves this year. So if they unveil the 5,000 chips and are able to push ahead of them with a lower price tag, of course, they're going to push the envelope. But at the end of the day, we are the ones that win, right? The gamers, the content creators, because these two companies finally are fighting tooth and nail against each other, which means every year we seem to be getting better products or every two years. So that's great. I mean, I remember when the Intel... 200 series i7s and the intel 700 series i7s were very similar and when amd released ryzen you see the very next year intel released their 800 series which all of a sudden their i7s were now six cores 12 threads instead of their traditional four and ever since then so we're talking three to four years ago these two companies have been fighting tooth and nail and making affordable processors for us i mean keep in mind it was only a couple years ago you were paying 400 dollars for a four core processor from intel and it was almost like you had to because it was the only thing on the market that was comparable uh, amd had their 800 their 8350 or whatever they had which was great for budgets but they weren't good as far as what are you going to do when you stream and stuff like that and people were also building second computers for streaming that's something that's in the past when you have chips that are this powerful when you look at this i9 20 thread processor and it's coming in at 500 dollars. i know that's expensive but that's actually pretty affordable when you think about where we were a couple years ago you're able to stream game everything off of one pc and before that was kind of unachievable unless you spent you know two thousand dollars on a processor they were out there and i've seen people that buy them so briefly we can look at the 5900x which we don't have too much to go on although we do know that we're going to break five gigahertz with amd for the first time uh that's not too big of a deal but at the same time it is it's a marketing thing right if amd was able to push 4.9 and everybody was excited about that but it, when you have five it's just people are able to say i'm able to get five gigahertz and that's something that intel has been able to do you know with their their k chips and amd just never reached it. amd's thing was they always had more cores but they were not able to get to that number now how it translated in gaming well the architectures of these chips are different some games are better on intel some games are better on amd now amd is also going to be able to say they can get five gigahertz now this is on their 12 core 24 thread processor the 5900x now like i said i just upgraded to a 3900x which is a 12 core 24 thread processor and i don't see myself update anytime soon because why would i do an update <laughs> i just paid i don't remember what it was somewhere in the 400s for this chip and it completely crushes uh 4k rendering and does the best i can i can think although i do have a 470 chipset i would be able to do this uh, according to amd um i'm probably going to stick where i'm at for a while and you guys that are into gaming i would say stick where you're at for a while unless like you're just putting money say hey i want to buy a two thousand dollar computer you want the best that's on the market you don't want to get something that's a year old i understand that too but as far as upgrades it may not be something that you guys should do but we have plenty of time
Let's wait to the announcement. Let's see the real numbers. Let's see real world applications. Let's see games that you actually play. Like if you guys are Call of Duty fans or something like that, let's see if it actually makes a difference. Will you be able to easily hit that 240 hertz? If that's possible and that's what you want to do, then maybe that's right. But right now we just don't have enough information to go on. And a lot of people are hyping it up. And a lot of people are saying, this is great. This is great, which this happens every AMD processor cycle, happens every release of video cards. AMD is the hype machine. Radeon is the hype machine. They're good at doing this. They're good at getting people excited, which is great. You know, it brings people into this community. But at the same time, uh, it doesn't always pan out. A lot of people get disappointed. Although we do get better products, it may not be exactly what people wanted. So there you go. I just wanted to talk about this briefly. I just want to look at some of the stuff to go over with you guys. I'm going to keep you guys updated as the stuff comes out. And particularly with the, uh, the RX 6000 cards, I really am interested to see where they go there because currently I'm running an NVIDIA 2080 Super, which is a great card. But I want to see if Radeon actually has something that's going to be a competitive you know, counterpart to, to something like that at, an, at a better price. Because as I mentioned in the other video, I feel like NVIDIA kind of dropped the ball on this release because releasing limited quantities of their video card, uh, there has been scalping and that type of stuff on eBay, which is kind of terrible. And a lot of people that have been waiting for it have not been able to get what they wanted. And with all these people that are looking to buy, it's kind of the shame if you're really into PC gaming and you want to move forward with newer hardware. As I said, guys, if you could give me a like, put a comment down below. If you don't know what to comment, comment what number like you guys are. Please subscribe. I'm going to keep pushing out videos like this and I appreciate you guys watching. You guys are awesome and thanks guys. This is Andrew and we are Elite Gaming HQ.